decorative wraps, funky wrapping, um, many words for it, and it's an art. There's some fantastic rod builders worldwide that do some absolutely fantastic pieces of art, spending hours and hours uh, making rods look absolutely beautiful. Now, I get lots of questions asking me for different kind of chevrons, diamonds and stuff, because you don't see me doing that often unless I really have to. That's because most of the rods I build are fresh water and I want to keep the weight down. So I'm not adding a lot more thread and epoxy to the blanks. But with saltwater rods, it's very, very popular and I do occasionally enjoy doing it. So when I got a question to show you how I did a certain build on my Instagram, which is a half dragon scale wrap, I thought, let's do one. This is Rob Building, and this is a decorative half dragon. I'm Gary Benny, English rod builder living in Sweden. I've been building rods for many years, and now you're gonna join me in my workshop going through tips, tricks, techniques, tools of the trade, all the things you want to know when you're coming to build a rod. We're gonna drink a lot of tea, so join me on the ride. Let's have some fun. This is Rob Building, let's do this. So setting up a dragon scale is quite easy if you know how to do it. And there's an easy way and there's a not so easy way, of course. Um, and I'm not here to teach you how to do shortcuts or hacks. Uh, I know how to set one up properly, but the half scale dragon is extremely tricky without doing a certain shortcut, should we call it. Um, the outcome is as good as the, uh, let's call it the long-winded method. Now I'm not one to try and do anything that's gonna make it look worse. It needs to look as good or better, but faster. That's the ultimate for me. So dragon scale, half dragon scale, what is it? For those people who don't know, it is basically a thicker weave underneath a lighter thread over the top. Now, when you're gonna do that, it's going to leave a pattern. It's gonna show a pattern coming through, and when you epoxy it, it's gonna make the surface of the blank uneven, and we're actually going to do that. But we're not just gonna make it look uneven all over the place, there's gonna be a pattern underneath. And when you do it, and you see it in the light, it sparkles like dragon scales. And that's where it gets its name. Now, the half dragon scale is a little bit different. Basically, we're going to miss a bit. We're gonna make a gap, so you're gonna have both that weave that style that underneath and then we're going to have a flat section that's going to be rotating and spiraling up the blank now that's not easy to do if you were to lay it up the traditional way let's talk about the traditional way first to do it old school you need to use a mono or fluorocarbon that's the best i found some people will use braided line, but braided line, I will find it flattens down a little bit too much and you're gonna lose the pattern underneath. It's not gonna be as apparent. Whereas a nice round line, like a mono or fluoro, you're gonna keep that pattern. It's gonna be more apparent and it's gonna refract more light in different ways. So you're gonna get a better result. Now, this is gonna be working fine for a full dragon scale and the full is where it's gonna be all the way around the blank and up. Um, it's no problem at all. You can set this up like you would a normal diamond wrap put some tape on the blank and then mark it up intervals around the circumference of the blank on both ends and then wrap round and join up each one going two ways. So you're gonna end up with lots of very small diamonds up the blank. When you've done that, you're then gonna get your power wrapper and you're gonna weave over the top and you're gonna see that lovely pattern come through. Now, that is the old school way, but today we're gonna to show you a way to do a half dragon in half the time. So like I said, we're not here to show you hacks. We're here to show you good things and tips and tricks. And if any of you have ever seen this before, you'll know this is drywall tape. Now, this has got that lovely thick mesh to it and it's gonna be absolutely perfect for what we need. We're gonna wrap this around the blank very simply like this. Now, if you just wrap it around, you're gonna see it's gonna start to overlap. It's not gonna be quite good. The pattern's gonna be distorted. So there is a few tips and tricks to get this right and we're gonna run through them right now. So first step is to mark the length of your wrap. Uh, work out exactly what you want. And for this demonstration, I'm gonna do a wrap of, you know, about 20 centimeters, something like that. It's about eight inches. Um, and that would be quite a long one. Maybe you'd do it in a split grip if you really wanted to, or maybe you would do a four grip coming down and you'd have a, a big guide here for your first stripper guide. 
and you would have the wrap in the middle. Um, that's what we're going to be sort of imagining is on this rod. Now we've got the drywall tape and you have to imagine you want to put the drywall tape at 45 degrees to the blank and that means your diamonds will be running parallel up. I'm going to cut a piece of this drywall tape off and when I cut it I want to be cutting quite close to one of the joining lines and that's because I don't want to have those little stems poking out on one end. Then what we're going to do is we're going to work out the dimension we need to do. We're going to put it on the blank and start to wrap around. Now you can see immediately this one here, it starts to overlap and we do not want that. So we're going to have to cut this down. And when we're doing a half dragon scale, I'm looking to have a gap in the middle of that. So I'm actually going to cut this completely in half. This stuff is self adhesive, it's got, it's got a little bit of sticky to it, but it's not that bad. You don't have to worry about getting it on your fingers. There we go. Now the piece you want to use is you want to be cutting as close to both sides as possible. You don't want to have that sort of like uh, edge. So what you want to do now is take the time to just go along and cut those as tight as possible without cutting into the line. So when you've cut all of those little edges off, then we're going to lay it into between our two marks. Now you want to be starting a little bit longer because you want to be able to tape this down and you also want to be able to tie it off later. And you can see now when I'm going around, I'm leaving a gap in the middle. And as I go around, I want to make sure I have a gap that's equal. I'm going to get a bit of tape and I'm just going to tape down the end like so past where my marker was. And then I'm going to go around here and with a ruler, I just want to make sure that I've got exactly the same. Now this is about an inch gap in between the tape. I'm going to try and keep that gap consistent. So to every now and again, just check we've got an inch, keep it the same. You, this tape is kind of a bit bendy, an inch. And as we go around, just make sure that all the diamonds are facing the same way. Again, just check the gap, still an inch, until you're going to find you're going to go past the end until you go past. Once you get past the end like that, you don't really need to worry. You can just finish it off and tape it away. So now we've got it on really tight and you can start to see what I mean about a half dragon. So only half of the blank in between is actually wrapped with a dragon scale and in between is flat. So at the moment, this doesn't look so explanatory how it's gonna look, but trust me, I'm about to put the wrap over the top of this now and it's gonna look amazing. Before I do that, I would like to state that it normally works better with metallic threads. If you're going to use any sort of non-color preserver threads, it's not really going to pop as much. You need to have the light refracting from the different angles. So I think that basically it works the best with metallic thread. You can try it with others. I've also done it, but it doesn't really have the same effect. So now we're going to do the wrap over the top and this is where it's going to start to reveal itself very nicely this is about it's it's more than a d grade thread thickness it's more like i don't know like an e or an f or something it's very very thick and i'm going to go in with an a grade metallic gold and the reason i'm doing gold is because this one it really you know shines off the most and what you want to do is let's say for instance our grip was here and here we might want to come back a little ways just past half an inch to a centimeter, something like that. And you're just gonna start your wrap off like you would normally, making sure it's going very, very even and get it very, very straight. That's super important, like so. Now, for this, you might want a few different tools. You definitely need a burnishing tool and a thread pick of some sort, um, because what you're gonna be needing to do now and again is just bunch up the thread and you'll see now, you want to keep your thread tension at a decent amount. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. You want it just right. <laughs> now that doesn't really help you, but you, you just test and tension away. Uh, make sure your tension is working nicely. And what you want to do when you think you start got it right and nice and straight, you want to start activating the power wrapper and going down. Now keep a steady pace on it. start to see it appear. Now anytime you see any parts that aren't quite wrapping up, you just want to go back and burnish them out, make sure it's nice and tight. With this you will see you're going to have to take it easy, do a little bit of stage at a time and just really make sure it's good because 
If you're gonna do any epoxy over the top of that and you see gaps and stuff in the thread, it's gonna be very apparent with such a good decorative wrap. So like any decorative wrap, really take your time to do it. What I'm gonna do is put a bit of tape over the start of the wrap now, like so. And then we're gonna continue. That's just gonna keep that down tight. get any jumps like that it's just to wind back take it easy it's gonna happen because what you're doing is you're going around an area that's wanting to go from thick to thin all the time just go back take it easy set it up again and then just start just notice I had a bit of a area that didn't really wrap tight there so I'm just gonna go back again Always make sure you've got enough thread before you start doing one of these very long wraps as well. Just back it off, back it off until you can start to burnish it up again like so. Making sure it's nice and tight and while we're here we can just go over and just make sure the gaps are good. You can flatten it out quite nicely. It's looking really, really smart. Okay, now here's a good point to show you. If you look here very closely, you'll see that now what I've got is a little bit of a problem. Where we've tensioned down uh, over the top of this. You can see this is poking up a little bit now. And what you want to do with that is you just want to take off the tape and you want to just back off the wrap a little bit and then just lay it flat again. Now you notice that we're almost up to our mark there. So I know that this is going to be past the one inch difference I want. So I'm just going to pull it tight like so and then just tape it down again. And that will make it a bit easier for when I start doing my wrap. So when we're at the end, it's just a case of doing a simple tie off. Like so. And there you have it. You want to go across now with your burnishing tool and just sort of like rub across it a little bit. Um, this one's really tight because we took our time and we made sure it was bunched up. And if you don't do that and you have to go back and really sort of address it, there's going to be always some nasty uglies you can't get rid of. Um, sometimes you might have some knots or defects in your metallic thread. If you do see one of those come up, it's just annoying, but you're going to have to take it off and start again. Some people will hide it with some kind of wrapper stuff. That's up to you, but I prefer to do it properly. So we're just gonna go across and burnish it. We didn't have to use our thread pick at all, but should you have any sort of like areas which are a little bit more stubborn, you can just use that to just gently poke the thread around and without damaging the metallic um, you know, wrap around the, the nylon core. But this is looking really, really nice. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get a very, very sharp razor blade and we're gonna cut off around the dragon scale at the end there. Um, you wanna go very, very careful, and like I said, that's why I use a very, very sharp razor blade and just basically push all the way around, making sure not to touch the gold thread. Like so. When you get it all cut, you can just pull it away. So when you got the tape off, all you want to do again is just snip off like you did the other end. Just gently go around very carefully, making sure not to cut into that gold thread. Otherwise you're going to have to do it all again. Gently pull it away and leave a lovely half dragon. So there we have it. We have a half dragon. Uh, I'm gonna give that one a little spin for you there. It looks good as it is already, but trust me, when you put some epoxy on that, it's gonna look even more impressive. It's really cool. As you spiral the blank, it just, it kind of boggles your eyes a little bit. Uh, super cool with the light being refracted in different ways, and it just looks like it's sort of traveling up the blank. Super, super cool. Like I said, make sure you get those uh, distances between, and your eyes just keep going up following it up the whole time super super cool what else could you do with this well um, you can do many things I've used it as an under wrap 
Um, I've used it in split grips. I've used it uh, just to bridge gaps in different parts of the rod, etc. The thing looks cool. I've even put logos in between on the flat section. Um, one thing I do like to do though is I do like to run thread up around the join where the dragon scale meets the flat section. I'll actually do that in a second. I have actually done um, a tiger a tiger wrap over the top of this as well, which looks really crazy. Um, but of course with the nylon threads, uh, it's a little bit tricky and the sacrificial thread you have to put in. So it's, it's a lot of work. You have to go very careful and take your time. But if you do, do it well, it can look fantastic. Personally, I love to have a flat metallic. Um, but now what I'm going to do before I do a coat of epoxy is I'm just going to run some threads up it and show you exactly how I prefer to finish this one off. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we've done uh, some sticky tape on either end, so that's just backed up tape and that gives us like a sticky tacky end to start the thread off with, so we're going to stick it on. Um, and then what you need to do is get a cup of tea and then come back and carry on. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in these threads. So you're gonna start off by coming in and you wanna line up roughly where the thread joins from the flat section to the dragon scale. And you're gonna just literally trim around that edge like so. Uh, you could, if you wanted, lay like multiple threads in the same time, I have done that. But I always find it easier to start off with one thread and really kind of pack it down tight against the edge there. Um, because it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna squeeze that thread down even tighter where it joins and you're gonna get sort of like a tighter seam. So we're gonna go around keeping it really tight. And then finish it off like so. Then I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get the burnishing tool and make sure she's bunched up as close as possible. So just run it all the way along again. We did a good job there, but you, it always slips down a little bit because you've got like a ramp of, you know, shiny metallic thread that is quite smooth and slick surface. So it, if it's not tight, it's gonna move down. Let's go around. And you can already see that just that black thread starts to give us a little bit more of a contrast on the edge there. Then I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a new, another color. Um, you could here, if you wanted, do a fade of gold, for example. You could do a lighter gold and then another darker gold and another darker gold again. Uh, I'm gonna go for a very regal look. I'm gonna drag out some metallic red. So I like to use one of these uh, for just putting in small different colors. I like to use one of these fly tire bobbins. Uh, they're quite good to have. They're, they're a little tool that you could have in your workshop maybe. Uh, it's not so common to use them if you've got a multiple thread carriage, but just sometimes I think it's a bit easy with one of these. It keeps a nice tension and it's very easy to use. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the red in like we did the black and very simply we're going to come in and go alongside the black like so. Just laying it in, making sure it's budged up. like so. And you'll find the metallic thread there is gonna to wanna to move a little bit easier than nylon. It doesn't grip so well on those sort of like those edges, but just go very careful, keep it tight. And what we can do in a minute is we can use the burnishing tool again and just push it back into position. I think actually what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put in another band of red there and make it a little bit thicker. I think it's gonna look pretty cool. Again, coming in the same line, following the thread round. looking pretty cool. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chuck in uh, exactly the same gold as I used on the top. Again, trapping it round, coming into position. You want to push your thread carriage further down and just wrap it around. This thread will disappear until we put some more red and black around it. There we 
go. Now we're going to go in with another red. And now we'll see that gold that we just put in start to pop in the middle. Oh, make sure we're lying alongside. I overlapped a little bit there. Got to go very careful. If you find you're overlapping a little bit too much, what you want to do is just come back a little bit and drop your thread a little bit lower just so it beds down beside instead of overlapping. Here we go, and then we're gonna finish off with another band of black. And now you can start to see what we're doing. We're adding just a trim, spiraling up the blank on the transition from the flat to the dragon scale. And that's what I refer to as a half dragon. That looks really cool. Now if I just rotate that very slowly, you can see how that looks absolutely phenomenal now you could leave it like that it looks really really cool but i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to do another one just on the bottom side here um, and then that's a wrap so i'm going to do that now and then we're going to chuck it on get some epoxy on it and we'll see what it looks like with a little bit of finish running around it so the half dragon scale wrap is done and uh, as you can see it's looking absolutely fantastic Got in with the gold there to get that really good light refraction to get that contrast and then just finished up with a little bit of black, red and gold in the middle. A very regal touch. Of course you could add more, you could almost fill this up with a complete wrap, why not? I've seen people doing some really complicated styles when they're actually doing olive branches the whole way around. So if you've got hours to spend and you really want to play with this, be my guest. Now this looks good as it is now, but trust me. I'm gonna throw some epoxy on it, and then you're really gonna see the magic. And there we have it. We've got the first coat going on the half dragon and you can see now it's absolutely amazing you get that deep richness of the gold you've got the light refraction coming off where the dragon is you've got that flat really nice contrast surface against that with the, and then you've got that really nice banding just running through i absolutely love this when i very first tried it i fell in love with it and i've done it on quite a few rods and everyone who's seen it has really liked it i've had a lot of requests for it a lot of people saw it on my Instagram, and that's why I've had a lot of people asking for it. Thank you for the person who asked for us to show in uh, this episode. I'm going to keep watching this one for a little bit, making sure I get rid of any air bubbles that pop up before my next coat. But that's it for today. This is Rob Building, and that is a half dragon wrap.